All right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another stream with me, Ian Robinson, lead zebras trainer, training manager, and artist here at Maxon. Hope everyone's doing really, really well. What's up, Chase? What's up, IC Film? What's up, Aime? How you doing? Okay, so first and foremost, real quick, I wanted to make an announcement, which is student teacher licensing is back. It was shut down for a little bit. We, you know, we really, we do feel bad about that. So we, we you know, we had to, anyway, long story short is that it is back, it's ready to go, but this time there's a slight change to it, which is $20 US uh, for US, so USD money. Um, so whatever that equates, it might vary for you, but $20 for the year, not six months licensing. So it's a year licensing. So definitely check that out if you're a student, you're a teacher, you're looking to get into Max on One products, more specifically ZBrush, that's why you're here, then come on in, check that out. So I'm gonna drop a link to that in the description, but again, uh, it's for, for the US it's 20, so the price might vary depending on your location, but that is it. So I just definitely wanted to quickly make that announcement that it is up and running. So again, I know there's a little bit of delay and some of you had that licensing. So here it is, just wanna make officially, it's back. So definitely chomp on that. Yes. How's it going? What's up, Frank? How you doing? Rodolfo, what's up? What's happening? I made it, yeah, <laughs> you did make it to one of my live streams. What's up, Haxer? Uh, Hax, Haxier, how you doing? Hearts, absolutely. What do you need for student teacher? Yes, so you need to obviously be enrolled into a school, um, either as a student or as a teacher professionally. And then, yeah, you just need to validate your um, your college or your, your school, whatever that is. Um, so yeah, uh, e they'll ask you for like an email. They'll ask you for like your, if you have a student ID, they'll probably ask you for that. So they'll ask you for credentials that you'll just have to, um, uh, to have them validate. So it's a pretty simple process. What's up, boy spook? What's up? How's it going? So really, really simple. Wanted to cover that. Um, and yeah, so let's get some music. Let's get some music and let's actually, okay. So um, who here? <laughs> I got a small story for you because I wasn't sure what we were going to sculpt and I was kind of leaning over a few different ideas and then I realized that last night my kids and I we went and we saw um, the new Five Nights at Freddy movie and don't worry no spoilers I promise you that but um, I was like thinking you know what I actually want to um, I actually want to sculpt something from there so let me see here hold on my, my normal music track is no longer available did they lock me out did they lock me out let's see let's go here let's get play okay cool this is perfect this is the music we're going for hopefully you guys can hear that i like to provide music in my streams because i think it's just nice but it's all through pretzel rocks which is which is fun let's see here uh i wanted to ask are the job opportunities vast of this kind of stuff so um you mean for like uh for like teaching yes teach trust with the program like zbrush Absolutely, teaching is something that um, is actually a really good opportunity. There's a lot of, I would say there's a lot of ZBrush artists that know ZBrush well enough to really lean into their skill set and to do their job 100%. Um, but ZBrush is one of those programs where if you've heard of the 80-20 rule, then I like to say it's more of like a 95-5 rule. You really only need to know to, to be like a great artist in this program, to understand this program, you only need to know like 5% of this program, which is insane because there's so many features. But if you're somebody like me who started sculpting by just literally bashing clay together, then yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely, you're like, you can just like, yeah. There's, there's, my point is there's room for, for growth. If you end up learning so much of this program, then there absolutely is room for growth and there's opportunities for that for sure. That's actually how I got my job. So, um, cause I, it was a, somebody who was like, I needed to know how this program worked. And this was definitely something that, um, that I was benef I was grateful to know like, oh, this is how, this is how I can get it done. So yeah. Absolutely. Long-winded answer is yes, there's opportunity. Okay, um, so I'm just re, I had to reset my, my system earlier today, so my driver changed, so I'm just moving it to one thing. There we go. I like to use the whole tablet when it comes to this. All right, let's see here. So we're gonna be doing something a little bit different today. Um, 
I started sculpting more stylized, and I watched Five Nights at Freddy's last night, and so I want to sculpt this cupcake from him. So we're going to do, if you know Five Nights at Freddy, you'll know what this cupcake is. Uh, but of course, too, you guys can ask the questions and all that good stuff. I'm here for you to help you learn and to grow in any way, shape, or form. So we're going to go with a Mr. Cup Cupcake. Mr. Cupcake. He's going to be super fun. I'm also secretly going to try to 3D print this for my daughter for their birthday. I'm sure my son would want one, too. But uh, let's go 001. Boom. Done. Okay, great. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to insert this guy right here and we're gonna go through some stuff. Let's see, been looking forward to this all week. Yay, that's awesome. Is it okay for the 3D Academy, not a school? That I don't know. Um, if it's not a valid school, they may, you know, they may have like, I don't wanna say valid, like, if it's not a if it's not a college university or like public school it may not be but it doesn't hurt to try and ask like you can reach out to them and see if that validates it's a third party company that validates but they work with us closely so um so yeah i would say it's worth asking because i don't i don't know who all gets who all gets validated and who doesn't so that would be something to definitely ask okay so we're just going to go ahead and kind of mask this area off a little bit we're gonna do a very simple block out. Now notice the shape right here. This is actually a lot. This is 32, um, this is actually 32 active points. And I don't want that, that's, that's way too much. So what I'm actually gonna do is delete this guy and we're gonna just quickly stamp this out. And I'm gonna bring in the cylinder shape, drag this out, hit T for edit. So I'm in this and we're gonna modify this. So we're gonna to go to initialize I'm going to say something more like 16 would be perfect. And then I also don't want any of the V divide except for the main shape here. So then this would be something that looks really good. And what I'm checking for is overall consistency and making sure that it's, it's a nice even number. So then I can go ahead and say make polymesh 3D. Come back to Mr. Cupcake. And we're going to go ahead and insert. And that shape is now here. There it is. Bada bing, bada boom. Well, Max, on be bringing back the zebra certification. So we are actually working on finalizing the zebra certification. It had never been officially, uh, it had never been officially um, uh, released yet, but I know we've made announcements and we are working on getting that. So yes, it's very soon we will be doing something like that. Okay, so we're gonna go on the Y axis. We're gonna do radial. So I said 16, so eight. So this is already a perfect number to kind of mask this section off, right? And then what I'm gonna do is just kind of come in here to one of these points and start bringing this in, just like that. It's gonna give me this nice shape here. So if I actually hit D, then it's going to have some fall off. Of course, we are very low resolution, but this will be the main cupcake shape. Perfect, and what I'm gonna do is save myself some heartache here. I'm gonna to go to poly groups and group by normals. So then this happens right here but actually I'm going to just quickly hide these control W to give me a solid poly group all the way around or what I could have done in just a, just another way around it is actually this max angle. I could have said something more like 60 or even 90 and said group by normals and then it would have done just that. But see here, this kind of fall off a little bit. So maybe this was more like 75. There we go, something like that. So you have the ability to adjust the angle in which that works. My symmetry is having a problem in the past, even when I say, even I rotate the sub tool and sculpt with the angles, uh, the sculpt perfectly symmetry. But these days, if I turn angle and sculpt, the symmetry seems to be perfectly sub. Um, not sure, not sure. Okay, I wanna see IC Film if I fully understand. So let me quickly go over symmetry with you real quickly and see if this helps you out here. So we'll like kind of just start from like just the overall basics. So symmetry, what's up T-Wordle TV? How you doing? Was that Twirtle? Twirtle TV? So X, Y, Z, all that stuff. So we just got X axis right here. This is me being truly symmetrical. Um, I'm not sure what version you're in. If you're in the new version, 2023, if you turn on local sim, you'll notice there's a new button up there called dynamic. This was 
very new to ZBrush 2023. And the reason for this is that at some point in time, you might be wanting to work on something off of World Center or World Home, and you wanna work on it truly symmetrical. So by turning on Local Sim with Dynamic, what that does is it allows me to rotate pivots and then from there still sculpt symmetrically because it's 100% based off of the gizmo location. So that gizmo location is going to affect the symmetry. If I throw this off, holding Alt over here, now my symmetry is completely different. It's actually being symmetrical from the center of this gizmo, right? So this gizmo is driving the symmetry here. If I turn off dynamic, now I just broke that symmetry of the local symmetry that I had because it's no longer gizmo center. It's more back to the original way of what everyone would be used to local symmetry from 2022 and previous. So dynamic is gizmo center, but this will keep me symmetrical at all time. And this is the benefits of the new version because now I can keep going. So think of like an armlet or think of like a piece of jewelry that you want to have truly symmetrical and uh, you know, but it's off on somebody's arm or it's off on somewhere else in the world and you still want to work on it symmetrically. The benefit to this of course is the fact that, you know, if I come over here, do, 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 and I do like, does that work that way? I can't remember actually. Turn on radial symmetry. Yeah, so radial symmetry, this works because then look, I have radial symmetry as well, even though I'm off center. So I'm able to really focus all my attention symmetrically inside of that gizmo. And even still this works with, um, I believe it works with masking. Let me double check before I just start preaching to the choir on something. I'm just gonna go back over here. So I believe that it would work even on a symmetry. Let me see. So yes, so it works with masking as well. So again, that's the main benefit. But if I turn off that dynamic, now that breaks. Now that's all over the place and that does not work. So that's local sim. So if you're switching between dynamic and regular symmetry, then you're going to break it for sure. If you're just working with normal local sim and then let's say like, I'm just world center and I make a change. And then I say, yes, there's my chain to do something like that. And then I move this over here and now I would, I will duplicate this, right? So let me see if I do a mirror and weld, watch what happens with this piece. If I go mirror and weld, nothing happens, right? If local symmetry was turned off, it would do your traditional, but with local symmetry, regular turned on mirror and weld, of course, nothing happened because it's symmetrical at this point. But if I were to then, let's say, turn off symmetry, start working, and then, you know, maybe do something like this. And then I say mirror and weld, you'll see here, it's finding the center point of that object, which is exactly what local sim would always do. It always find the exact center of that object. So this then of course too, you're gonna wanna, you're like, well, I need to get this back to center. So then you need to recenter that, turn off local sim, and then re mirror and weld that. So if I understand your question correctly, it's really easy actually, to kind of bust it by like kind of flipping too quickly between dynamic or local sim. So um, I would say like kind of, my tip would be to pick one and see if that is helpful to you. Let me know if this is actually what you're asking for, if, if I understood the question correctly. Yes, yes, perfect. What are we making today? We're gonna have some fun today. So we're actually making Mr. Cupcake. In fact, you know what? Let me do this. Let me actually, real quickly, let me quickly and effectively just grab a quick image real fast. I wonder if I can do this. I want to see if they'll like a nice JPEG. Throw that on the desktop. I realized I didn't put any concept in here and I like to do that. There it is. Mm-hmm. There it is. Add the spotlight. Boom. I'm gonna do something fun. Hit Z. And of course, if you're using spotlight for reference, like I'm doing right now, then you'll definitely want to make sure it is under samples. So brush samples, turn off spotlight projection because spotlight projection is on by default. So you can do your spotlight. Okay, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Perfect. You are absolutely welcome. All right. So we have our main base shape here and I do not want local symmetry. 
because I'm utilizing the gizmo. Um, so I'm gonna be turning that back off. There we go. So now I have this main shape here. I'm actually gonna turn off symmetry. Let's go back to just normal ax, uh, Z, um, X, X axis symmetry. And let's do a little bit of just quick topology love. So I'm gonna add some edge loops here, gonna add some edge loops here. Now we have uh, a massive end gone at the very, very top. And that's actually what I don't want here. So I'm gonna add an edge loop there and add an edge loop here. And I've been a really big fan of doing mesh fusion lately, uh, just because I think it's a feature that's underutilized and I've been preaching it to the choir. So shout out to Henry Shervanka for this quick brush that's gonna be amazing. So I have 16 quadrants here or 16 uh, vertices. So I'm gonna grab the 16 dial. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this on out. Now notice it disappeared when I did that. That's because I have solo turned on. So I'm gonna turn solo back off. Hit the sub, say something like that. That's actually, we don't need to go super massive. We're gonna do something like that. And then I'm gonna to go to geometry, turn off smooth, turn off smooth, control drag, control drag, brings that up. And I'm gonna repeat this right down here. Control drag, control drag. That's gonna give me, that's gonna get rid of that pole and turn this into some quads for some good old love. And then I'm going to, again, just quickly select these two, control shift tap, control W, control shift tap, control W, giving me some different groups. And then we can edit this mesh just a little bit with the Z modeler. I don't need that edge loop and I don't need that edge loop. It gives me just a little bit of love. Reason for this, it's gonna end up rendering so much better and it's gonna look so much nicer when we round it off. Yes, what's up? Hewn Sun, how you doing? How you doing? All right, okay. So we're gonna do the block out portion first. I'm not gonna focus on any details. So this is going to be the actual cupcake, um, cupcake, what is it? Um, wrapping, <laughs> wrapper, wrap, wrapper, wrapper. Can I, yeah, that's right, I think. I don't know, I can't spell today. They don't pay me to spell. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do, actually instead of inserting, we're just gonna go ahead and control uh, shift D, duplicate, get this mesh here, because this is a mesh that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna flare this out, and then I'm gonna control drag up this way. So what this does is actually when I control drag this up, it's gonna give me this kind of clipping effect, which is really, really cool. And I dig that. And we're gonna go ahead and shift this down. And then we can keep this sym symmetrical if we would want. And the easiest way to do that, obviously keeping symmetry on, but we can use the move infinite and kind of start pulling this down a little bit. And we'll just kind of keep this in this area. So this will do the front and the back. And again, we'll kind of come down this way. Now what we could do just to make our lives a little bit easier as well, let's come up here to transform and let's turn on not the Y, good job Ian, let's turn on the Z. So then we can focus on getting this even through on both sides as well. And then we'll just hit the move brush and we'll finesse this a little bit. So we're working on everything fully symmetrical and then we'll do a light smooth get something like that. Now we're working in DynaMesh and we're not gonna want that. We're gonna want some nice topology because maybe we'll throw it to Substance Painter at some point, get a little TLC. So we will end up cleaning this up, but first and foremost, we wanna get the main base shape of the eyeball. So we'll start carving this in a little bit. This will be a little fun, rebuild that. Mr. White, hello. Uh, what brush did that? That was the Move Infinite. So the Move Infinite will allow you to like here's the move brush if i just turn off the symmetry and i just move with the move brush that's going to affect obviously the one side the move infinite which is b for brush m for move n for infinite it's going to infinitely move everything that goes all the way through the axis you're looking at this brush is so cool because it'll just quickly push through and do the other side whereas before it's just going to do the, what it grabs, it's just whatever vertice it grabs. So if I just turn off symmetry, it's not affecting the back, it's the front. The downside to this brush or the kind of like warning message is that if you are if you forget you have it on and you're tweaking stuff, then you might realize that you're doing the same thing in the back. So we wanna make sure not to do that. And then let's actually 
Come back up here. I don't want to be on the Z axis anymore. And I want to come back and hit that clay buildup. B, B, C, B. And let's tear this in a little bit. Hey, Zachary, how you doing? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. Matt, Matt's here. What's up, man? The mesh one? Oh, the, fu the mesh fusion. Oh, the mesh fusion is so cool. Okay, mesh fusion. So let's solve this out. So mesh fusion, what that does is if you, um, let's actually do, do, do. I'm just gonna control here real quick. So what that does, kind of come back here for a second. So with the mesh fusion, what this basically does, think of this as like a really quick way to get rid of your end guns fast. So I have a brush that is courtesy of Henry Shervanka, which is just basically a ton of different brushes that have pre-baked meshes that are nice and clean. You can achieve this brush really, really simple. If I wanted to make this brush from scratch. All I really needed to do, you know, without having to re-topologize anything, like if I have this, just this sphere shape here, is that how I can do this really fast is go to polygroups and then group by normals. And then let's just quickly crease all my Paulo Gabri's. And then I'm gonna subdivide a few times so that I have a nice clean, you know, nice rounded area. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then I can easily just Z remesh. I'm gonna turn on my transform and I'm going to focus on the X and Z. So then I can, re I can Z remesh the front the, uh, the, the left and right and the back side as well. And then I'm just gonna keep keep creases, keep groups, smooth groups down to zero, adaptive size down to zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and just Z remesh this until I have the shape that I want. And you can count this too. Like you can you can come through and count how many this, this is, right? Until you're satisfied with this number. And then I can go ahead quickly and just grab this piece, delete hidden, Modified apology, delete hidden. Now I have the shape and I can make the shape a brush. So if I say create insert mesh, say new, now this is my brush shape, right? So now I have this nice clean topology. So now if we go back to, do, 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 all the way back to just this end gone, we need polygroups for this. So I'm gonna do group by normals one more time. And now what I can do with this is I can just come through, I'm gonna turn symmetry off I can drag the shape out. Let's turn solo off for a second for this as well. I can drag the shape out and line up where I want that to be. And then with uh, geometry and smooth groups down, you gotta turn off smooth groups for this to work and you have to have poly groups. Control drag and control drag, it rebuilds that mesh for you nice and clean. And so now I have this nice, this nice topology that's right here. Now the reason why, um, I'm using Henry's brush, which I believe I have a link for that, so I'll share it for you because it's really awesome, is that he already has all these different shapes with the right type of topology on there. And I didn't feel like making the same brush when somebody already had it. So let me get you a link for that. And you guys can go download it as well. So just massive shout out to him. He was also at the Zebra Summit. So definitely want to check that out. I think he actually, I, wanna, I don't know if he gives this away for free, but it's it's worth the couple bucks if you buy his course. But yeah, this this is actually super awesome. It's called Mesh Fusion. It's been around for a long time and it's really good. And it just gets rid of these poles really fast. And you don't have to do it on a flat surface. I like to do it in the beginning when I'm using, uh, when I'm sculpt or I'm doing hard surface in ZBrush because it just lets me get clean topology very fast without having to use ZBrusher all the time. You're absolutely, no, no problem, Ben. Yeah, Mesh Fusion is awesome. Crease on my Paul Gabriels, I like that. <laughs> that is cool. Well, so every time you drag out a vertice, every time you drag something out, it's always snapping to that vertice. It's gonna face to that. If I press and hold shift as I'm dragging something out, then it's going to, it's gonna change that. But every time, because ZBrush is vertex based, so it means everything is affected on the vertice. Every time I'm dragging it out, it is 
snapping from that normal's direction. And if you press and hold shift, it will then alter that, that, that sense. So I'm dragging this out, press and hold shift, it will change based on my, uh, I believe it's my gizmo position. So something like this, this flat surface, when I drag this out, it's perfectly flat. It's already faced the way I want. And then now I can just do that. And you can get some cool shapes like this too. You are so welcome. So that's how I ended up, right, getting this shape here. So I actually, let's delete that guy. Let's delete that guy. And now I have this one. So that's how I got that shape right there. And really, really nice. Because then all I need to do actually is come through here, add in some multiple edge loops just to give me some good support. Boom. I got a, I got a decent shape, right? So really, really effective. Here, what I want to do is actually I want to turn on, I want to turn on um, my radius one more time here. No, nope, not that one. I actually want to do bop, 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 boom. And I want to, I want to actually crease these edges right here. So I'm going to come through here. I'm going to do crease and I'm going to do partial loop. And I want to crease this section right here. Yeah, that's going to give me a much better edge for that, which will be perfect. And then from here, I can just go ahead and add some extra edge loops. There you go. So now I have something a little bit more like that. And I want to affect the fall off. So I'm going to go to crease, take this crease level down to two, and I want to affect the tolerance of 25. So when I start subdividing, when I put smooth back on, it's going to start rounding off and not be super sharp, but it'll give me some nice fall off. So we'll keep it like that. And actually, I don't need this edge creased, so let's do a little bit of manual work and let's clean up that edge and that edge. But we could actually come through here and just do crease by Paul Gabriel's. Boom, done. That will affect that and give me something like that. Okay, let's hit save. Do you use a display, uh, hi, Ever. Um, hey, Ever, how you doing? Thank you for sharing your knowledge here. Do you use a display pen tablet or a regular tablet, no display? I'm planning on purchasing one. Your input would greatly be appreciated. Absolutely. So, Ever, I use both. Um, but, like, right now, I'm using the Sense Lab uh, large tablet. Or was it large or medium? I can't remember. Hold on what it is. This is the one that I'm using. It's a medium bundle. This guy right here. I don't know if you see that. It's actually really, really good. It's an awesome tablet. Um, really, really good. Uh, so I like them a lot. I've been using their stuff for a while. I also have a uh, Cintiq display at home, and I also have a Sense Lab display that I've been using at events and shows lately, and really, really good tablets. So those are the two that I highly recommend. Uh, Sense Lab is just like a Cintiq, but just a little bit more budget friendly. I think this one here was like, well, don't quote me on that, but look up Sense Lab. I'll share a link real quick. I don't want to misquote anyone, um, but their, their tablets are really, really good. It just depends on what your style is. If you've never used a display, I will tell you that it, I, would, I would say try it. I would say don't just go straight into display without giving it a shot because a lot of, I would say a lot of, um, uh, well, me personally, let me speak on my on my knowledge. Me personally, it's um, it's something that I actually had almost buyer's remorse on. So, yeah. But this tablet is fantastic. So let me send you a link here. Boom. And I know there's some other tablets. There's like XP Pen and there's other stuff too that's out there. So, but that's the one I'm using, and I really love it. It's a great professional style tablet. Um, that's really, really good. <laughs> Did I turn Paul into a, a unit of measure? Nah. That's actually how I, re that's how I remembered. Uh, that's how I remembered it, which is so funny. Uh, I did that again. I sculpted eyes in the back. I didn't mean to. You know, that's okay, actually. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, if I remember this feature right, I'm going to go ahead, do a morph target. I'm going to, gonna come here 
Is it B morph and then where are you? There we go. Oh, I thought that worked that way. Did not, okay. Then let me do the history recall brush. Can't be in symmetry mode, that's fine. There we go. History recall for the win. I don't wanna have to undo, it's not a simple, it's not, I could have just done, just redone it, but I don't want to. I wanna be lazy. Okay, perfect. So let's get uh, the main base of these eyes did done. Make sure I don't have symmetry back there turned on. There we go. Let's turn on a little bit more of a friendly. I don't want to keep wireframe on and kill my eyes. There we go. So we're going to come through here and we're just going to pop this hole just a little bit bigger. There we go. Say something like that. We're going to give them teeth, by the way, because that is definitely uh, what we want. And I want some eyeballs. And there is a macro that comes straight in, append eyes. This is actually something that ships with ZBrush. So now I can come in here and get these eyes. Uh, black is not gonna be the color we live in here. I'm gonna turn local sim on, put dynamic off, and scale these up a little bit. There we go. Make it four eyes. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I did that again, it's so funny. I'm like, are you, are you freaking kidding me right now? Like, come on. We'll do some eye painting here in a little bit to really bring this character to life. But for right now, let's get him, let's get him in there like such. And he also has like some black paint in there. I'm assuming those are kind of like eye bags. And then let's go ahead and let's re, let's get this guy in here for a candle. And this actually has some twisting to it, so we might do some fun here. We'll see. Let's get that shape in there. I like to get all the base shapes in as quickly as possible. I'm gonna put this in a folder. We're gonna call this candle. I'm gonna control shift D to duplicate that and scale this way down and get the wick of John's in there. And then let's do this. Let's go ahead and get a sphere. Let's drag this in here like such. And then really, really quickly, we're going to go asymmetrically. So I'm going to do the snake cook brush. So B, S, and then for me, I think it's K. Yep, perfect. Some sculptress action. There we go. I'll say something like that. Maybe smooth that, smooth that down just a little bit. Boom. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. And we're done. Got that shape, which is perfect. So let's do Z remesher at 128. There we go. Or Dynamesh. That's too, that's too big. That's, that's good for now. Actually, this whole candle is too big. So let's pizza box this. Done. Hey, 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 what's happening? Uh, I dropped a macro for white eyes in your Discord a while ago if anyone wants it. Oh, awesome, Jamie. Oh, that's so awesome. So many great tips in 10 minutes. <laughs> My history sometimes doesn't rewind. Sonny, that's because you, you might have symmetry turned on. You can't have symmetry with history recall. Is it okay if you make a ZBrush development suggestion? You can always throw your suggestions at me. Um, that doesn't obviously that doesn't mean they'll make them in, but you can always throw in in there because um, yeah, you know it's always nice to hear how the community is using the tool and how ZBrush is affecting you know everyone's workflow. So please definitely like you can always throw me your your thoughts and advice because you know we can't think of everything all the time. So yeah, please please feel free to do so. Long-winded answer. Or as my, as, uh, as my awesome boss says, <laughs> he's like, it's the training answer, because we, <laughs> we do that a lot. Has anyone seen the new Five Nights at Freddy's uh, uh, movie? No spoilers, but if you have, that would be, I'm curious. Okay, so right now, this is the main basic shape of him, and it's good enough. We'll give some variation here of how this works. 
He's a little... I think he's a little too... Okay, let's actually squish that down just a little bit more. There we go. I think that's going to be cool. And let's actually do this. So I'm going to turn on the actual um, spotlight, and I'm going to just see to grab that color. And then I'm going to switch colors and do C one more time. So then I can actually come here real quick, color fill, switch that, color fill. I like to get the base colors out the way. Let's just do a quick color fill, fire. Fire's always nice. Boom, a little bit of flame. Hit Z again and then color fill that guy. And then go back for white, color fill that guy. Okay, there we go, that'll be good. These eyes are a little small. Now here's what I do like about those macro eyes. See, they got poles, which is awesome. But I wanna see something, actually. I wanna see, let's go primitives here. Just switched them out for these because these are actually a little bit more nice. But now you know that macro exists. But these actually have some good, some better topology, a little bit more low res, which I think is nice. Yeah, and it just looks a little bit creepier. Awesome. There we go. But we can go back here, grab our toy plastic, and then we could just do MRGB and let's do color fill. Perfect. Turn that off. Switch back to something like that. That's another way. That's another way. Let's go ahead and save it. It's already more beautiful than my one month sculpt effort. <laughs> no, they can't. No, you're doing great, IC Film. My suggestion is bring back uh, micro nuggets. Oh, okay. This universe, the world should be honors of place. Oh, thank you so much, man. I watched it yesterday with my daughter. Uh, there was a little bit more gore than I expected. It was a fun movie. I know, Kuma absolutely was a little bit more gore than I was expecting. I saw it with my 12-year-old and my 15-year-old, and uh, they loved it, which I think was awesome. But, yeah, it was a little bit more than I was expecting, too. <laughs> Not going to lie. Okay, so let's Z-remesh this guy here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this. So I want to work low res. I just chose Dynamesh to give me the main basic shape. That I was looking for. I'm not trying to match it a thousand percent one to one, but this will be this will be pretty close to what I would want it to be. Okay. It's more of just a fun little project. So here I'm gonna keep my poly paint, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. Keep groups down to zero, adaptive size down to zero. The reason why I do this, for those of you who might be wondering why I do this, where I'm at target of five adaptive on but curves uh, adaptive size slider down to zero with key groups the reason why i do that is adaptive on is going to try to adapt the quads to the flow of the actual existing mesh before you actually go ahead and do your zebra mesh it's going to take a look at everything but the adaptive size is all about increasing the the, the quads how big or small they get as it's trying to zebra mesh and this is kind of, this is a nice feature if I have some really complex shapes, but I also want my quads as even as possible. So when you lower this down, this, the quad adaptive size, the, the quads are gonna stay relatively close to each other as much as possible. But adapt is still going to figure out how to adapt the mesh to the quads. So it's, a, it's in my opinion, a really easy way to get a clean zebra mesh fast and quick with minimal poles because you're going to have now a lot more even topology and then key groups with smooth group with smooth groups down to zero smooth is a natural thing and when you do smooth sometimes your mesh will smooth a little bit more than you want it to which looks like it's shrinking but it's actually not it's just smoothing a lot more because the lower the vertice count the 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 the, the smoother it it will become more smooth quickly. Um, so there could be points where normals don't mind, line up 100%. So in that case, this helps with that and just make sure it doesn't reduce down so much, even though I only have one poly group. So here, when I go Z remesh, we'll take a look at this mesh. We'll do a control tap on top. Z remesh comes through, and now that's actually nice. I'll go ahead and say half. And you can see here, I'm actually able to get really nice and clean topology super super quick 
And this is actually quite nice. Let's go one more time. How low can we go? Perfect. So this is really nice, and this is a really fast way to get some really clean mesh. Minimal poles. I actually have some nice edge loops around here, which is really cool. Actually, that was very, very fast. And I kept my poly paint. So now I don't have to like redo that. So now I have some nice low res, uh, lower res topology. And here I can actually come in and start pushing this up. Actually, let's do this. Let's come back here, hit D. I'm gonna actually come in here and use that Z, push it up as even as possible on the inside. Kind of smooth that down. We're just like reshaping the actual look and feel of this now. Cute cap, thanks man. How many caps do you have? I have a lot of caps actually. I have beanies and I have caps and I love I love them so much. Uh, something I've been I've been wearing since the pandemic and then I just kind of kept wearing them. Originally I started wearing a lot of uh, hats and, and, and such because like my headphones would put too much pressure and so it would actually like help with that. But now it's like, yeah. And I actually just ordered this one not too long ago. Also, it's kind of like my it's kind of like my look now. So many people recognized me at Lightbox this year because I because <laughs> I had the hat on. Okay, so this is actually quite low, and I'm trying to shape, but like every time I smooth, it's like fighting me, right? So this is really low resolution. So we can actually come through here. I'm gonna do just like a base smooth. Just kind of relax that a little bit. I'm going to subdivide a little bit and kind of re redo these shapes a bit. So I got move infinite back on. Turn my symmetry back. Yep, I got my symmetry on. Just get these Bane shapes. And the reason why I subdivided just a little bit was because I wanted to just give me a little bit more vertice to hold the shape down. Sometimes you could be too low. That is possible. Okay. Now let's get him some teeth and then I'll take a look at the chat real quick. Um, I've, Let's see, Anthony, uh, I believe, uh, hey, and I believe Shane mentioned you had some presets for Sense Labs Remote. Do you have them shared somewhere? Actually, the presets that ship with uh, Sense Lab, the, those, are, those are mine and Paul Gabriel's. We put our heads together. Um, he originally, he, Paul originally did the, the, the main Sense Lab um, setup, and then I was talking with the Sense Lab team, and I went through and added my own little flair and, and changes to what I thought was good. And we came up with a nice middle ground. So yeah, what the presets of Zebra ships with uh, Sense Labs is actually um, what we think internally is like the most used features and be super useful. I just spoke with the Sense Lab team about giving like a brush preset as well. And they're actually working on that um, like actually right now. So, so that's something that is happening. So they'll, they'll actually have them ship with it. But I can, I can always like share my stuff too in like my Discord or something. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna want this to be a little bit of a hard edge. So we're gonna go with some pinching here real quick. Just doing just a light pinch. Because he's, he's supposed to be, he's not smooth, he's a hard surface character. So this is where I'm going to subdivide again. I'm just focused on the shape. Smooth some of this down, get like a little bit of a relaxed smooth. There we go. There we go. It's a little bit more of a harder edge. Let's get the move brush. Just going to finesse these a bit. There we go. 
Little, little TLC. Okay, let's get some teeth here. Yeah, where's the beanie? Gary, it's summertime, it's hat time now. It's now hat time. Beanie's coming out soon. It's like 90 degrees in California and it's November now. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's get some teeth in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert. I'm gonna get a nice little cube in here. We're gonna sew this for just a second. Actually, before we do that, let's actually just kind of, I'm gonna stamp him over here. Boop, stamped. Come over here, we're gonna call this teeth. And we're gonna hit solo. So now we're gonna focus on this. Now there's two ways to get like something really, really quickly. One is you can come up here to the cog wheel and just hit poly, uh, poly cube, and it'll give you this shape. And you can modify this with the cones, however you would like. This is one way to do it, which is actually really cool. Or two, you just come over here to initialize and drop these down to one and hit Q cube. And now I have this guy. I like to do that. I think it's a lot easier. And then I can come in here and just create some simple sh simple shapes very quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and modify topology mirror and weld, not delete hidden, mirror and weld, which will give me some nice shapes here. This way I can keep it symmetrical. And then we can come through and add in our own edge loops for this. So come on. I'm just gonna do something very simple. In fact, actually I wanna taper these teeth. So I'm gonna just quickly mask off this side. Invert this, I'm gonna bring this in. So just taper it a little bit. There we go. Simple enough. Simple enough for what we wanna do. Boom. Now this is where if I wanted to keep the tooth perfectly symmetrical, then I absolutely could turn on that dynamic local sim, keep that center to the world. And I even what I could do if I wanted to was come over here to stager and set a home stage. And then from there I can move this around, right? So I can have this on this side can move this around and get this off center just a little bit, right? And then I can go ahead and duplicate this tooth, control shift D, rotate this. And now both of these are gonna be perfectly symmetrical, but I can have a, a kind of uh, asymmetrical look to it, but I can modify those any way I need to fully uh, symmetrical. So that's that's a way you can go ahead and do that. Let's put this in here and see, it kind of keeps it nice like that. We can even keep this one just a little bit skinnier, just a little bit of variation. Yeah, perfect. It was 27 Fahrenheit this morning, ouch. Oh, nice. You ordered one for personal use, Anthony? That's so cool. The moment when you're set tools, right? <laughs> uh, let me ask a question. How is your topology so smooth even with the small resolution? So it's smooth because I have good topology. And here, like this is actually pretty low res. The, once the topology itself is actually nice and clean, then it makes it for an easier... Uh, an easier transition. So let's say like, let's delete this here real quick. I'm just going to save this. Let's delete higher real fast. And I can use creasing, right? With good edge loops to come through here. Say something like this. Oh, I have a spiral. So that's actually not that good. Uh, let's see. Why do I have that there? Let's actually do this. Let's go, not crease. Let's go here to point and we'll go crease shortest path. So like, let's say like this point here to this point here. So I'm just utilizing this section. Oh, I do. Oh, that is a nasty spiral. So that's actually not that clean, but it's clean enough to sculpt on is my point. So therefore it could actually, you can actually have like some pretty nice topology. And so when you do like a temporary smooth, it's going to look really, really good. And that's kind of what we want. So 
we want to have that topology as low res as possible for things that are hard surface or stylized, but smooth enough so that the fall off looks good. And that's what you really want. You want nice, clean fall off. Here, this is actually, I got a spiral. So I would actually have to fix that. I wonder if I could, let me see if I could fix that real fast. Let's do a little bit of troubleshooting. Let's do zebra mesher guide, right? Let's come in here. Let's say I want to actually, I'm gonna actually do it on this side. So I'm gonna come here to stroke, lazy mouse, Let's turn that up a bit. What I'm gonna do is come through here and say, I wanna protect this. This is what zebra mesher guide is all for. And I wanna do this, I wanna have this edge flow go. So if I come here to zebra mesher, do same, but now I'm gonna turn up the curve strength slider. Say zebra mesh. Now nope, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Nope, that's not doing it. Let's, uh, oh, that's okay. That's where manual read topology would come in, but it's good enough. It's close enough for what I want right now. Maybe if I subdivide a little bit and then delete lower, and then maybe let's try this again. We can actually do, let me try something actually. Let me try one other thing. Cause that's the thing. There is, there is a point where something is too, too low, right? And let's actually detect edges instead. Let's try this. That's better, let's go half. Okay, and let's use zebra mesher guide. See if I can actually draw. See something like that. No, that's not working for me. That's fine. I'm not super worried about the topology itself, to be honest. I think this will be. I think this will just be fine for what I wanted. What I, what I want to achieve. But yeah, it's all about just having the right edge loops in the right place. Now I was hyper focusing. <laughs> now let's see here. Uh, sorry for the wrong question. Oh no, you're good. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's all about just like the edge flow itself is, is, is working in my favor. Okay, I just subdivided that, which gives me some nice fall off here. No, you're fine. Yeah, no, no, no. There we go. Let's do that. I'm going to just shrink this down just a little bit. Now I want to refine these shapes a little bit here just to get like, so it looks like it's wrapping around well. Yep, that's totally fine. I just end up, you know, hyper focusing on stuff. We're not giving him a mouth today, so that's okay. I'm gonna step down, kind of do a light smooth here. Perks of a multi resolution, of course. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the standard brush to give me a little bit of a uh, flare. Like not flare, but I'm gonna give it a little bit of like a bump. So here I'm gonna go ahead, it's actually too high of a resolution. So let's delete lower, delete higher. So we have a little bit lower. And then let's do stroke, lazy mouse. Here we go. And the standard brush just going to help kind of make that look a little bit better. What's up with this music? I chose VHF. This is v VHS music. My lo-fi was turned. I got to see if my uh, if I just my count on my uh, um, on my pretzel rocks didn't re-up. I had some cool lo-fi music I liked. I'm gonna give him a little bit of an expression. Nah, that's not good. Okay. There we go. All right, now we can go back 
the subdivisions just a little bit. And now I'm gonna do, let's actually paint. So I'm gonna go B, P, A, and we're gonna do paint depth and we're gonna go almost true black because I actually want, what I want is a little bit of fall off. I want it to look like there's a lot of depth, but also too, I want there to, um, I wanna just get something that kind of naturally feels a little bit more realistic, but still keeping it kind of that cartoon style. I don't want like a harsh paint line. Maybe I do actually. I changed my mind a lot, if you hadn't noticed. <laughs> Let's do a sharper. Ian says, mm, we're gonna change it. Yeah, let's go harsh. Let's go harsh like that. That's fine. Yeah. Let's do a hard, let's do a hard line. That actually might look pretty good. I changed my mind. Did everybody have a good Halloween for those who celebrate? Okay, we'll do a little bit of cleanup on this too. Yeah, let's let's do that. I think that's gonna look nice. We're just gonna go ahead and grab this one here. Let's do stroke, let's do 100%. And then we're gonna do a lazy mouse this, right? And then I'm gonna come through here so we are gonna go a harsher line all the way around. Right, and then from here, I'm gonna go ahead, hold Alt. And then actually I wanna see something real quick. I wanna go to brush, I wanna go to depth. Let's do a depth part and let's kind of push that just a little bit more. Help control maybe that fall off a little bit more. And actually too, let's come over here and let's go to brush. Let's go to auto mask and then let's go to back face. So then hopefully it'll control going further than I want it to. There we go. Nice steady hands. With a little bit of lazy mouse. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. I think that looks good. I was gonna do a nice soft fall off and then I realized, no, that's not good. Hmm. <laughs> Leonard says I got 10 kids, that's funny. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, let's see. I used to use slice brush with remesh to keep groups and get the loops I want. Yeah, that's a great way to go about it. I'm being super lazy today. Will the split screen mode in ZBrush be updated someday so that it works with multi sub tools? That would be an awesome. That is that. You know what? I will. I will. I will make that notation. Yeah, I'll make that notation. No trick or treaters came to your door last night. I went and I saw the FNAF movie, so I didn't. Even, I, I didn't even. Uh, I don't even know if trick or treaters came to my door. They don't usually. My area is actually a little bit, um, my area is a little bit, uh, like, not so many kids show up. But then, like, just down the street from me, a bunch of kids show up. It's funny. There we go. Okay. Gonna do a smooth relax, but no RGB. So let's, I don't want RGB on. Okay. Let's do this. Let's actually come here. Let's grab that. And on these teeth, I'm gonna come here, fill, and then come here and fill that. Grab this one, color fill. Come back. Okay, cool, let's get some eyes painted. I think that's gonna look really dope. Oh, bye Gary. You can't full candy, <laughs> candy bars, full size candy bars, that's awesome, dude. Oh my goodness, that's freaking awesome. 
Jealous. I want some full-size candy bars. Leonard, give me full-size candy bars. Okay, let's add, <laughs> let's add this guy right here. And then this has like some like twisting to it. Um, and so what I'm gonna actually gonna do with this one, I could do this one of two ways. There's actually, okay, so actually, you know what, how I'm gonna do this? I'm gonna keep this mesh just like this, but we're gonna do a fun mesh merge, right? So let's actually clean this guy off. Let's put him over here. And actually real fast, gonna grab this. I'm gonna change these teeth around. Yeah, something like that. That's cool. He has a little bit of a gap in his teeth, so I'm gonna do something like that. I still want some asymmetrical vibes. There we go. That's good. Okay. And actually, let's come here. Let's merge down. Let's merge these two together. And then let's get the candle, and then we'll do some eyes. And then he's really going to come to life. So let's hit save. Okay, so I'm going to stamp him. Boop. Control shift over there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back. I'm going to say switch. And we're going to come over here, and we're going to grab the helix. So I got something like this. And I went into edit mode. Now we're going to go to initialize, and we're going to make a change. So not thickness, but the radius. Let's grab this little dot right here and drag that off, and it's going to do this. It's automatically giving me that kind of shape that I want. And I did this for wraps last week too, but I'm going to lower the subdivision so it's down a little bit more like that. And then, of course, too, we can add more division if we would like to, but I would say this is pretty nice. Me be we'll quad it like no that's nah nah three what was four look like nope no good all right three perfect that's good make poly mesh 3d poly groups group by normals right this is going to give us a nice a nice one we're going to go with multiple edge loops add a single one grab this guy and then we're going to go ahead and delete hidden so let's go modify topology, delete hidden. Okay. So now I have the shape here. Let's go back into our fun little dude. Let's get this candle. Let's open this guy up and let's paste, insert now this new shape. Yeah, this will be fun. This will be good like that. And then let's go ahead and let's give it some thickness. So we're covering over the Z modeler Q mesh. In fact, actually, you know what we could do? This will be fun. Let's actually give it a little bit of thickness like such. And then let's come over here to multiple edge loop interactive elevation. Give it a little bit of a little bit of a bow or a bowing so that it bows. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. And then let's actually do this one more time. Let's pull this in. Yeah, it's a nice little fall off. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I'm also going to just quickly, let's do crease. Yeah, so it looks like that. Let's come down here to the bottom. Crease that. There we go. This music is this. I can't do this music. Ah, <laughs> uh, it locked my other stuff. Oh, what's uh? Let's see here. What's this one? This this one's putting me to sleep. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear, it, but for me, it's not not good. EDM got marked. I should sleep too. It's like 3 a.m. in Korea. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Icy Film. You should definitely get some sleep. Thank you for all those great tips and everyone. Absolutely. Have a great day, Icy Film. 
Oh, this one. I wanted to. <laughs> it's recorded, you know, IC film. Like, don't worry. You can get some sleep. I promise. Get some sleep. Get some sleep. Okay, here. Okay, here. We're going to do the same thing. Remember that mesh fusion technique? Now, I want to want to sculpt on this for a little bit. So we're going to be repeating some stuff. So let's go poly groups, group by normals. Mr. Henry Shervanka, here we go. I know this is 16, so M, and then let's pull 16. Let's drag this out. Let's go to V, let's go drag this guy out. There we go, yes. There we go, this is a little bit better. This one doesn't really matter as much, but there it is, okay, great. And then let's go Z modeler. Actually, I'm gonna put some wick detail up on this. So we're gonna push this down just a little bit. There we go. That's perfect. Let's go insert. Actually, that interactive elevation might work out here. We could do something like that. Perfect. And then let's just go ahead and add just a just go back to specified. There we go. Add in a couple more. Boom, boom, boom. That should be fine. The rest is hidden. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. And then here, let's just drop this down. And then what we're gonna do is make this look like it falls off naturally a little bit. So I'm gonna go to B for brush, S for snake hook, and then I think it's K for me. Yep, might be H for you, but I think it's K for me. And here, I'm just going to quickly subdivide a few times. And then I'm gonna hold Alt which is going to help it kind of push a little bit into looking a little bit more natural. Do a light little smooth. There we go, see something like that. Can even balloon it up a little bit and let's give it like kind of that bluish color. Can even just rotate that around if we want. Actually gonna use, let's use our move topological. Kind of move this a little bit more. There. So it kind of just comes to an end. And then we can rotate this around. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. We got something like that. <laughs> so what's the difference between the extrude modeler and the Q mesh? Oh, great question. I love this question actually. So the extrude, okay, so let's do this on actually like a cube shape actually. So I'm gonna go solo, insert, and I'm just gonna insert a basic uh, cube shape. There we go. Boom. Okay, so here's the thing. So with extrude, so if I go B, Z, M, so B, Z, M for Z, M, B, Z, M, thank you. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and go with the extrude, and we're going to do just a single polygroup to showcase it. So extrude, what's cool about this, of course, is that if I have a single polygroup and I'm dragging this out, it's great. I can get that extrusion and I can even continue this forward, right? Um, the downside to this is that what if I want to make this and this, like I want to get rid of this section here. Well, if I go extrude and I'm pushing it in, notice it's keeping that, that vertice there. It's actually getting keeping this wall and I don't want that. Let's actually get a better material for this. There we go. So I don't want this, like I want this to go away, right? So now I have this and this is not what I want. Where Q-Mesh Q -mesh comes in clutch is that it's like extrude, but um, on steroids. It's not only going to allow me to extrude, 
but it's also going to edge detect. And that's gonna allow me to come in and get rid of that really quickly. So then I could come in and do stuff like this, where I start deleting that section off. What's also really cool about this is with extrude, if I come back to extrude, what if I need this to snap perfectly to this? Well, that means I'm gonna extrude, but I'm gonna to have to try to line this up. It won't actually snap to that wall. Whereas if I'm on Q mesh, it's automatically going to detect that as I get close enough, and it's gonna help keep me there, which allows me to have custom shapes like this, which I wouldn't normally be able to do with extrude. I'd have to do that manually. So it's just like, it's a much faster way. It also is a quick way to do holes. If I wanted to punch a hole like this all the way through, if my edge loops on the other side are supported, right, I can just push that all the way through and get a really quick hole. I can't do that with extrude because extrude will continuously extrude and you can see now my normals are flipped on the other side and it didn't punch a hole through there. So it's, it's, a, it's another way to quickly get shapes in and out as fast as possible and really just re respects the topology a whole lot better. So QMesh is ZBrush's extrude because it just it's what most people use and it's what I definitely uh, think is super beneficial. So that's the main difference. Extrude is still great and there are purposes where QMesh is just like too much and I'm like, yeah, dial that back. And then that's where extrude, extrude comes in. But for something like you know, for most of what I do in the beginning, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a lot easier. So hopefully that helps. Okay, that's perfect. There we go. So now I have this guy, let's get some eyes on this guy. And then we can start really doing some cleanup passes because right now this is still like the rough block out. How did I get that twist? Great, dude, it's just a super great question. I just went through it actually and it will be recorded. But essentially what I did was I came through to this helix and I modified it. So I'll, I'll do it again just because it'll be fun. So I came through, I'm gonna just switch back to basic 2.5D mode in ZBrush. And I'm going to grab this helix. I'm gonna drag this out, hit T for edit. And now I have this shape right here. And this is an edit mode. We're not in make polymesh 3D. I can't sculpt on this right now. And that's okay. You can see here that my menu system is a lot lower. So initialize, and then I went through radius and I made this actually straight on. I lowered the subdivision, which gave me this shape. And then I made this into actual geometry. And then I separated this flat area because this is actually a twisty coil. So I just went polygroups, group by normals, hovered over this edge and with multi with multiple sub to with multiple edge loops on Z model or selected on the edge, what I could do is I can actually get a perfect edge loop all the way around in the very center of my topology. Whereas where if I had something like single edge loop, I can't perfectly place it. There's no snapping. So I have to guess where that is, which isn't a bad thing. My eyes are pretty good, but if I want it truly perfect, multiple edge loops, start dragging this out, dial it back to the one, let go. Boom, you got this. Then control shift tap, which separates this poly group. Geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Got this twist. Z modeler, Q mesh, give it some thickness. You got a twist. And you can use this all the time for like anything that you need wrapping all the way around, then give it some asymmetrical vibe and you are good to go. And then I just added that in, copied it, pasted it over here, added it right onto this guy, gave this a little bit of color and say fill object, which is awesome. And here, what you could do as well, let's give this a little bit of variation. So actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna lower this so I'm gonna use the move topological. I'm gonna pull this out just a bit. Delete higher. I'm gonna give this some variation because there's some variation of color in this twist. So what I'm gonna do is actually give me a single edge loop somewhere down here like this. Then I'm gonna hover over this edge. We're gonna do bevel. I'm gonna bevel this. Yeah, like that. 
And then I'm going to go ahead, hover over this. I'm going to Q-mesh this. I'm going to push this in. Do that one more time. Say something like that. So now I have this. In fact, we'll push this in even further. There we go. Now this gives me this kind of twist shape. And actually, we could get a little bit more picky with this. Let's actually go here to slide the entire edge loop further down the rabbit hole. And then we're going to go back to bevel. Give this a little bit of a twist. Or not a twist, just a little bit more of a bevel. Then I'm going to insert, and I'm going to give this some edge loop support. Yeah, I like that. Now here, let's go back. Let's push this in. Push this in. There. That gives me just a little bit more control. Move topological. Where are we? Where are we? There we go. Something like that. There we go. A little bit of twist variation. Now we got a little bit of breakup too, so it's not so solid. Yeah, that'll work. Absolutely, you are so good. Yeah, not a problem. Are you doing your stream in an elevator? <laughs> why? <laughs> wait, why? <wait. laughs> Leonard, you're gonna have to. I'll stream every. I'll stream anywhere, buddy. Oogie 3D, I seem a little, I seem a little tired today. Uh, you know, uh, did a lot with Lightbox and stuff like that, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm a little tired. My voice is a little raspy too, I think, but still having the time of my life. Thanks for, thanks for looking at. Yeah, I mean, you know, Lightbox was fun, but yeah, the event itself. I, I did. I've done so much this year that I, I, I definitely am. Uh, I definitely am a little, little tired. I need a vacation. <laughs> not not, not going to lie. Could definitely use a vacation. Actually, I'm going to be taking a small little vacation soon, so it'll be good. There we go. Oh, but thanks for looking out. I appreciate that. Oh, the music in the, in the background. Dude, my playlist got completely, like, blocked. So they, uh, I need to, like, up my... I need to... Because I use Pretzel Rocks, which is, which is um, there's a free account and then there's a paid account. And you can have, like, copyright-free music on your streams and stuff so then people can, you know, listen to something good besides hear my voice all the time. <laughs> and, and so, uh, long story short, um, I, I, my normal EDM lo-fi playlist is now under lock. So um, I, I feel like, I feel like uh, Pretzel Rocks should just uh, open that back up for me. But and I'll have to do that. And then I had VHS music um, playlist, and that was uh, yeah, that was that wasn't that that wasn't that great. So yeah. Okay, let's modify this flame a little bit, make this look a little cooler, and let's get some eyes in there. We'll have the main thing pretty well locked in. Let's go ahead and hit save. There we go. Okay, let's get his eyes in there. Let's do some. Let's do something fun with his eyes. First thing, what I like about eyes is uh, we can point these in a way that makes the most sense. Yeah. Make sure the reason why I like these poles, obviously, is to make sure that uh, it looks and it looks right. You know what I mean? Let's actually turn lo uh, local back on. Reason why local same I want back on is so that it it's. Uh, it actually will go ahead and inflate evenly. Symmetry still turned on, so that's good. All right, yeah, that's that's pretty cool. All right, let's get some let's get some fun painting happening here, and we can we can have a lot of fun with this. So I'm gonna come in here, hit save. I'm gonna hit low res, so Control Shift D. There we go. There we go. There we go. And if I want while I'm modifying this, I'm just going to turn off all the color. Actually, let's turn all the color back on. Stamp them over here. 
I like this. I like to stamp them so the people know what I'm working on. Okay, now I could turn all that down. Settle this out. Let's focus on the eyeballs. Synth wave. I had yeah, that's I had that on there. Let me let me. Did I miss the synth wave one? It's all locked now. They're gonna love me today. Lo fi's locked, chills locked. Surprise me. It's what I had for a little bit, but if it's locked. Synth wave is locked too, man. It's all locked. The lounge. Uh that's open. All the slow stuff is open. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we're we're a little we're a little slow today. <laughs> I tried sculpting to meditation music. That was not a good idea. I nodded off. Yeah, absolutely. Don't do that. By the way, that interview with Frank E was really interesting. Oh, good man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I personally uh, really loved it. It was great. He was such an awesome person. I was so honored to feel like he wanted to sit down and get to know me a little bit better, which is always fun. So, yeah, uh, that was it was it was really a lot of fun. So I'm also pretty open about who I am too as a person uh, because like I feel like it's a just you know I don't mind sharing my uh, I don't mind sharing my process or who I am or where I've been in the world. So I've experienced a lot of things and everyone's journey to artistry is just, you know, it's definitely their own journey. So for me, like I had a lot of early struggles in life. Um, and, you know, I think it's good to be open about that stuff because everybody's perspective of life is a little bit different, you know, and I think it's beneficial to at least chat about it. So I was, I felt super honored that he had me on and I was, I thought it was pretty cool that we kind of went a little bit more, uh, a little bit more um, of the variety of like what we could actually discuss. So yeah, it was fun. Okay, so here we're gonna come here. And so we're gonna do that uh, mesh fusion. I need the smooth turned off. Actually, I'm gonna do this real quick. I'll make sure I line this up relatively close to what I want. Oh yeah, this is rounded actually. So I don't know if that's going to work as well as I wanted this to. Let me see. Yeah, that's not, that's actually where that's not working out so well. That's okay. Doesn't matter, that's why I'm actually pushing this here. What I actually could probably do, hmm, actually, you know, it's not worth it. That's right, that is correct. Hit the limitation on that one, so that's fine. So I'm actually gonna come through here and let's do, let's just give us some edge loops here. And no, we'll just keep this like this, there we go. That's fine. That, that should be good enough. Yeah, that's gonna be good. And then I'm going to solo this out, let's come here. Let's come in here and let's actually paint this black 100%. Let's turn all the color back on. And I want this true black because I don't want their shadows to be in there. I want this to look like it's gonna be super dark. And also too, actually, before I do that, this is crucial, I need to subdivide this a few times. So I'm going to subdivide and actually, hold on. Sorry, my brain's all over the place. So I'm gonna grab this and then I'm going to add this color, a new poly group. I'm trying to prep myself for what I think would be beneficial, kind of get my an idea of what that's gonna look like. And then I think what I wanna do here is grab another small one. And then here, let's do this on the edge loop. And let's go edge loop, poly group. Just something a little bit different. There we go. I think this will be good. Let's give a little bit of vertice here. So some extra loops. So that holds the paint a little bit better. Let's actually call this one out like that. There we go. So that should give me some nice fall off. So here I'm gonna do this, do this. Again, we're gonna paint this true black. 
which I don't usually do that as much. And then we're gonna come through here and we're gonna do this one actually before we do that. Now let's subdivide, sorry. There we go. It's gonna give me a little bit better of a response. There we go. So let's do this and let's do true black. Boom. Color fill, black. There we go, that's gonna look good. And then here, I'm gonna do this and we're gonna isolate this on that blue. So let's get that darker blue. It's color fill. And then here on this one, we're gonna go back to not true black, but like close enough. I don't want that seeming as deep. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's gonna be pretty cool. And then we're gonna give it a little bit of some TLC. In fact, actually what we could do if we wanted to, we can get a little bit more interesting. This is too thick. I'm gonna drop this down here. And here, what I can do. Let's go shrink, 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 shrink. Let's make that one. Actually, let's do a shrink, shrink. Now, nope, that butterfingers. There we go, get that one, these two. Yeah, let's do that. And then let's go ahead and let's grab this one, color, fill. Yeah, that's better. Sorry, I was just, uh, so, okay, so what I did, just kind of going back, was what I was doing was I was actually isolating, I was isolating just these areas right here with the poly groups. So touching a section, control shift S, which is shrinking or control shift X, which is growing. And I was just choosing how much of that last, that last black rim I actually wanted to grab and then just changing the poly group on that until I got it what I wanted. So my brain just kind of thinking for a second. Is Mesh Fusion a 2023 brush? No, Mesh Fusion has been around for a while. I want to say 10 years. That might be wrong, but it's been around for a long time. It was a fast way to go through it. Oh, you mean White Bat Arthur? He's a free copyright provider? Awesome. Very cool, man. Have one day you consider doing a stream on how to convert STL to high quality mesh to ZBrush in ZBrush to allow for textures and further refinement? I'll explain for the explain those for the reading. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We could definitely do that, Imperial Walker. Do you do you have to play royalty for music when you for YouTube streams? Um, I do because then I do just for the safe. I used to stream on my personal channel before I got hired here. So I, I would do it because if I wanted to quote monetize, then the royalty free music allows for that really easily. Um, however, with, you know, um, our, our, our streams, our channel here is not monetized. So, um, so it doesn't really, really matter, but at the same time too, it's like, I don't want my, I don't want me to become muted if YouTube's like, you can't do that. And then it mutes. And then, so it's just, you know, you don't want to strike against the account. This is the company account. So we all agreed, like this was the, this is the way we were going to quote, go about doing it. So yeah, just, this is just easier. Okay. So these eyes are a little flat. So what we're going to do now is mask this section off. Gonna get the paintbrush. I'm gonna get a lighter color. I'm gonna go RGB light. Now we're just gonna start adding a little bit of gradiency. And then a little bit of darkness. Go a little bit darker towards the top there. Just pops just a little bit more. There you go. Just pops a little bit more. I like that. Also a little bit creepy. I dig it. Nice. All right, now we can start. Now we can start finalizing this guy a little bit. You know what? Do I want? Do I? Mm, you know what? 
I actually may want to just redo the bottom of that cupcake. He looks a little weird with this one. Let's do that. Let's just redo that real fast. We have time. Right? We have time. Let's save him. Now, his eyes, I made his eyes a little small, actually. I just realized, and as far as the concept goes. So, you know what we could do? We could blow these up. And then we could just throw them in the back. It's also, it's lagging a little bit. Do I have, I do. Like it's lagging a little bit. Let's make his eyes a little bit bigger. That's fine, perfect. Let's get the move brush. Let's give him some TLC here. Perfect, that works. I think that works. Need to pick that a little bit more, give him a little bit bigger eyes. I think that works. Okay, great, let's save that. We can even probably, if we wanted to paint that further red, we could absolutely do that. Okay, let's come back here. Can you tell me the brush? Or oh no, it's not a brush, Leonard. Um, here, I'll actually redo it. I'm gonna redo this right now, so I'll walk through that process one more time. Okay, so, oh, you're talking about Henry's brush. I'm so sorry. I'm an idiot. Henry brush is right here. So it works with anything with other mesh, but here is the mesh fusion brush. Brain, dead, tired. Yes, I am tired. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the that's the link for if you want to have Henry Shervanka's brush. Um, how, yeah, sorry. My brain is dead. Thanks for playing. Okay, cool. So we have the candle now. Let's actually do this. I'm going to grab this color, and then I'm going to delete this one. I want to redo this. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I'm going to... I'm just going to pull in a normal cylinder. Cylinder right here. Nope, not that one. Delete that one. Not that one. Oh, you know why? Because I edited it. I edited it, 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 it. So let's come over here. This one, I'm gonna copy this one, which is the default one. I'm gonna paste that in. That's 32, which is which is fine. Do I want 32? One, two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 sixteen. Okay, let's do this. Let's actually kind of stamp him over here. So let's put this right here. I'm gonna stamp that guy. Let's come in. Let's do cylinder right there. T for edit mode, right? So now I have this. Initialize, not 32, 16. There we go, that's better. Yeah, I had it a little bit more low res than that, I think. And then VH, boom, perfect. What about 18? Does 18 work? 18 actually works. Let's do 18. That's fine. And let's go mesh, apply mesh 3D. And then I'm going to go here to, again, radial symmetry, Y. And 18 divided by 2 is 9. Which this will be cool because this will be a little bit of an asymmetry. Yeah, that's better. Flare this out just a little bit. And then we're gonna go copy, paste. There we go. That's better. It already looks better. You know, like when it's like that moment, you're like, yeah, this already feels like it should. Yeah, that already feels better. The other one was too low. Yep, you're welcome. Is your glasses for reading or fashion? Um, they're actually for eye relaxation. So my eyes actually, so random fun fact, uh, my eyes actually are, um, they, the muscles, um, they are really weak. So they have just like a muscle deterioration. So what happens is when my eyes get really tired, th the world is shaking. Um, I, so I put them on when I'm tired um, and my eyes are shaking. I'm tired, but my eyes aren't shaking so I can see fine. It's just my brain is not functioning. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so then, and then Leonard, the uh, mesh fusion technique. 
going back to that, so I did 16, no, I did 18. So here, turn that on. I'll drag this shape out, giving me the right amount of edge loops. Make sh Actually, before we do that, make sure your polygroups and group by normals is on. So you have something like that because you need your polygroups. Go back here to your subtool, drag that out. Control drag, make sure smooth is turned off. Control drag again, and it does that shape for you. And I'll just repeat that. Control drag, control drag. And as long as it's all connected correctly, it will do that. And then you can come through and you can change your poly groups. So you have something like that and then come through and then you could delete the edge loops you don't need. So I don't need that edge loop or that one. It's perfect. Let's get a better color. Turning my eyes, just thinking about that. Okay, great. And now from here, let's actually, let's do this. I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. So let's actually increase by Paul. No, I'm not going to do anything different. Don't reinvent the wheel. So then I'm gonna turn on symmetry and I'm gonna go crease, partial, or actually just edge loop. I'm gonna crease those areas right there. So when I subdivide and it starts smoothing out, it's going to get creased. And then let's actually go crease, drop this down to level two. Tolerance, 35. Yeah, that's that's a bit better. Actually, let's go level three. Did I kind of just make it the same? Let's make this bigger. There we go. Let's do that. Let's add some edge loops, insert. Crease. There we go. Did I literally just make it the same? <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> How tired is Ian? Well, he just made it the same. I think I just literally made it the same. I wanted more. Oh my goodness. All right, one more time. Okay, so if uh, if you think I never make a mistake, here you go, I just made two. Let's do this one more time. All right, let's actually start with this one. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Let's save this. Save. I think I do want this one. There we go. Okay, another way to do it. Let's pretend <laughs> Let's pretend I didn't do it that way. Let's do it one more time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, great. Good job, Ian. Good job. Are you guys having fun yet? Are we having fun yet? <laughs> so this is 32. Blah, 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 blah. Hit M, let's hit 32. That's what I wanted. Just drag this out. Wow. I need a bird. I need. I need to. Uh, I need to do this guy right here on this edge loop. Drag that out. Control drag. Control drag. There we go. Control drag. Control drag. Perfect. Great. Wonderful. Okay. And then from here, let's do this. Let's try this one more time. Why? 32 divided by 2 is 16. Yep, that's perfect. There we go. That's that's the look I wanted. Okay, you wanted 32. Good job. Good job. There we go. That's a 
ugly polygroup color. Give me something bright. There we go. There we go. Yes, it is possible to do it without Henry's brush. You could do it with any mesh on that, um, which I showed earlier on how you could actually do that. Yeah. Henry's brushes just are easy because he already has the topology I need. So it's, it's, it's just helpful to keep with the topology I already have. But yeah, you could do it with any mesh on it. As long as you have the polygroups and smooth is turned off and you don't have DynaMesh activated, control drag, control drag will do that. A thousand percent. Anything anyone else creates that is an addition to ZBrush, so for example, you know, like a, a plugin that gets created, um, anyone, anything that is uh, an external uh, plugin or brush is actually something that ZBrush supports. It's just, just wasn't with ZBrush. So if ZBrush can do it with Henry's brush, that means it, you can actually do it with any brush. Same thing with plugins. So if the plugin, if there's a plugin out there that somebody is using for whatever whatever feature or whatnot, um, the plugin is just literally an, a, a, a custom made script to do what ZBrush already can do. It's just now, um, it's just doing it faster in a sense. That's it. So just think of it that way. Like, yes, it can be done. Here we go. that in there color fill that object okay let's just come up here to sub tool let's go up to crease same thing let's go to tolerance of 25 so then when I start subdividing that it's gonna be a lot better and then here let's go insert and then let's do this let's do let's turn off symmetry Just gonna manually add some in here. Say something like that. Let's turn smooth back on. There we go. Yes, that's what I wanted. There we go, that's better. Let's do this, let's go to render. Let's turn on our preview AO. There we go. What do we got? Okay, cool. Let's finesse him a little bit to make him a little bit more, a little bit more uh, dynamic, and then we'll be good to go. Let's save that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the student licenses are fixed. I. They are fixed and they are good to go. We actually have the first announcement I made. Uh, so what you can do is you can go to your maxon.net, bada bing, bada boom, come up here to buy just like you would before. Come on down to the bottom. Also too, if you're looking for Substance 3D stuff, there's a bundle with that. Buy digress, student teachers, room, it is right there. So we did have a situation which allowed us, unfortunately, we had to do some pivoting on that student teacher license, but it is now back up. And it's actually a little bit, it's, a, it's the same deal, but instead of a six month check-in, it's now a yearly check-in. So as long as you're with a valid uh, school or university that, uh, we, 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 that we recognize as a proper EDU, you have uh, the proper, you know, um, like student ID, the, the mails, et cetera, et cetera you can go ahead and check it. Again, it has to be a valid EDU school system, which has special credentials that each school in the university has to have, or in the, in the district has to have. So, you know, if it's an online school, that's more of like, you know, somebody put together like tutorials and says, hey, here's a thing, that's not a proper EDU. So unless there's a sponsorship happening, usually like, like for example, Shane Olson's 3D Character Workshop, if you become one of his students, there, then you know we recognize that they're using our products and therefore there's a sponsorship that is attached to that um, so things like that you know there are exceptions to the rules but for the most part for a student teacher license you have to be a student or a teacher with valid credentials that come through and I just want to reiterate that it is valid credentials so if you are 
or if you are a student, come in here, check that out, and you'll be good to go. $20 for the year for all of Maxon One, including ZBrush, Cinema 4D, Redshift, Red Giant, Universe, Forger, etc. So if you have any questions about that, definitely also to reach out to support and ask them if there are things that you're not sure. So check that, check that. Yeah, the, the Substance Bundle, yeah. So we partnered up with, um, we did a partner collaboration with Adobe um, because we also do a lot of Substance Painter and Substance Designer stuff. Um, we've shown workflows. They've The Substance Painter team is amazing. All the Substance team is amazing. They've come on our shows for a Demystify series. We've done a lot of really cool stuff. So it has been really, really fun to actually come through and hang out with them. So absolutely, yeah, worth, worth the check out. Nice visual. That's awesome, dude. Just filled out the iPad survey for ZBrush. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Wolf. What about the XMD Academy courses? Um, again, I don't know if I don't know if they're a valid um, EDU or if we're currently working with them on anything. So I don't know. But again, you can go and fill out the recommendation. The worst thing that happens, you go and fill it out because you are you are a part, uh, attached to an academy or something and you fill it out and then they just deny it. Then what you could do is fill out a support ticket and inquire further on the possibility of that and just, just ask someone who actually can get you the right answers, which I unfortunately can't. I just know that that's how the system works. So hopefully that was helpful. All right, let's finish up Mr. Cupcake. He's looking really, really good. So I'm gonna do some Y, X, and we're just going to really quickly radial count this cupcake here. And I'm going to be flaring him out a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. Just, just to move everything up and out just a little bit, give him a little bit of like a, like a smidget. Same thing here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna going to use the standard brush and make it look like this is actually kind of um, embedded in his body like he's actually stuck in the icing there we go just give it just a little bit of that that umph and then what I can do here is I can come in and kind of cut that just a little bit A little smoothness. Yeah, there you go. There, yeah, something like that. And then we can come down here. Just kind of just move it all just like that. There, yeah. yeah, just a little bit, perfect. Absolutely not a problem. Got my XMD toolbox from the Sculpt Off. I'm unsure how to use it in my workflow. XMD toolkit is actually really cool because if you have a lot of custom brushes or you've purchased a lot of brushes, um, I guess it's the same sentence, uh, <laughs> then, then it's really good for tool organization. I personally use a lot of default brushes in ZBrush um, unless I think that the specific brush can give me a lot of value quickly and I don't want to rebuild. I could build any brush I use, even the custom brushes, but some, if somebody's already done it, then it's a great way to support an artist. You know, that's why I always use like Pablo Munoz's brushes, Henry's brush is amazing, or Cracks are amazing. Um, those are like brushes that I've invested in because they do something that, yeah, I could create it, but they already did a great job and I wanna support them. So I'll gladly go and I'll buy that brush or download that brush and use it and spread the word about how awesome I love that brush just because it's just, you know, making custom assets can be time consuming. And a lot of times we just wanna create. So I totally get it. And that's why for me, it's like, yeah, let's just, let's just go and support another artist and use their stuff. You would like to use your Cinema 4D on your Mac Studio while learning ZBrush on your MacBook Pro at the same time with my Max on One subscription. So you'd be able to release the license on one side or the other. So yeah, you'd be able to just, when you sign in, release it. But um, I would I would say, you know, that's, that's you can release license and re-sign in at any point in time. Um, that's the, that's the, unfortunately, or for, that's the only, it's the only solution I have for you at the time. Or just install ZBrush 
and Cinema 4D on both machines, and then when you're using the one machine, just release release the license. But I, I understand what you're saying. Okay, let's do this real quick. I want to clean this up a little bit. He's a little, he's not quite to my uh, to my level that I want him to be at. So let me do this real quick. I'm gonna take the clay brush. Not clay with paint. Nobody wants that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's come in real quick. Let's build this icing up a little bit by just giving it a little bit of wall thickness. Come back to transform and turn off radial symmetry. I did not mean to hit posable symmetry. There we go. There. All right, so kind of sneak that icing underneath there a little bit. Cool. So even though we kind of jumped around and repeated myself a couple times, I actually really like how this turned out. I'm gonna make a couple modifications to this guy right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to delete higher, delete lower, and I'm gonna collapse this edge real quick. I want some rounding. So I'm gonna collapse this edge. I'm gonna come in here to crease and undo that real quick. And then just go to insert multiple interactive elevation on this edge. I'm gonna flare this out just a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back to dividing. This is just gonna give me a little bit more. Hmm, actually, what we could do now is come over this edge, crease, add a couple just underneath so that flares out. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, let me turn symmetry back on. This was 32, so let me come up here to transform. I really do like this song, actually. Oh, 16, perfect. There we go. There, a little bit of fall off, a little bit more natural feeling to that. And then what we could do here is come here with a move brush. Just give it a little bit of a stylistic flair to that. Drop subdivision. There we go. There we go, step that back up. Yeah, that's perfect. Cool. All right, cool. I like that. All right, let's give uh, let's give the paint job a little did done do, and then we'll be good to go on the flame. So let's come here. We can also add a little bit of uh, um, uh, visual interest here at the top. Clay brush. Hey, Yarna89. Hey, Ian, guys, see you. It's called again. Did you happen to see my question in the last video? I couldn't you couldn't buy the Henry Stronger brush you talked about last time at Pixel Logic. Oh, interesting. Um, hmm. I did not see your question, but let me resend you the link. Not sure. Let me send the link again one more time and see if that helps. I don't know. Um, anyone else streaming after me today? I'm not sure. Um, I could check the schedule. Let's check the schedule to see who's up. So let's go to ZBrush calendar. ZBrush live calendar. Let's see who's coming up. I think A-Cube is streaming later today. No. Wait. Yeah, no one's, let's see, I'll come back today. Yeah, no one else is scheduled for today. So no one on the calendar is scheduled for today. So official, uh, officially, no. But, you know, if, uh, you know, like if AQ decides to stream and she pops on, then, 
you know, there's no one scheduled, so not really. <laughs> yeah, no one's scheduled. Let's just put it that way. So I actually want to paint and finish this. So we're going to finish them. There we go. So here I'm going to come through. Let's see. Hold on one because I couldn't find it on his art station. That link should be it. Yeah, hopefully that link works for you. Let me double click it. Yeah, that link I just sent you should be this. And then if you go to right here, go to free primitive IMM brush pack, view this. And if we hit play, he kind of goes through all the different stuff. And that should be... That should be the brush system right there. So, and it's free. So definitely easy to do. And again, he also has like this, uh, some uh, primitives as well for you to use. Really cool stuff. Yep, gotcha. Don't worry, I'll be on the schedule soon enough. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, so here real quick, let's just do a fun little quick paint job. So I'm going to hit Z and I'm going to pick a couple colors. I'm gonna pick that bright one. I'm gonna pick that kind of darker one. And then let's hit Z one more time. And then we will kick that yellow just a little bit brighter. And we're gonna start painting just a little bit. Get some gradiency. So we're gonna get a little bit of yellow here, just down at the bottom. There we go. So actually, before we go too much with this, let's give ourselves a favor. We're only on Dynamesh right now, so I'm gonna keep poly paint, keep groups down to zero, adaptive down to zero, let's zero mesh. Oh, look at that, look at that. Subdivide a few times, there we go. It's gonna give us a much better result and color anyway. Cool, let's go a little brighter. Okay, and then let's go a little bit darker. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So up here at the top, let's go darker orange actually. So you get that nice gradient. Let's actually move it a little bit more towards red so we can actually see what's happening here. There we go. Because flame is cool. We got a lot of different colors and stuff in there. And then what we can do here is we can add just a little bit of red down at the bottom. Right. And then here we'll switch over, paint a little bit more in the center, even go a little bit more towards white, but in the yellow range. There we go, a little bit more on that side. Something like that. There we go. A little bit of a stylized flame there. Perfect. There we go. A little soft on that side. There. See something like that. Yeah, it's cute enough. Perfect. You got it. Awesome. You only use eight brushes and ZBrush. Don't need much. 80% of my time is 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 brush is is the move brush. <laughs> absolutely. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Hey, what's up, Dustin? Hi, uh, Dustin, how you doing, man? Welcome in, welcome in. We're gonna be actually wrapping this up real quickly. Uh, here in a second. Just want to do a couple things real fast. On this guy right here, so <clears throat> pardon me. So here I actually want to add just a little bit of 
of TLC here. So I'm going to give just a little bit of sculptural volume. And then I'm going to show you guys really quickly how to get a just like a quick, decent render in ZBrush if you want to share something on like social medias and stuff like that. So, okay, here what we're going to do real fast. So I want to change this real quick here. I want to clean up this line. This line's nice and gross. So let's do this. Let's come in. Let's grab this color. Let's turn on, trans not transform, stroke. Let's go up to lazy mouse, make sure it's nice and solid. Okay, and we're going to come in here. And that's a fall off I don't want, so nice and sharp. So see here, it's a little choppy at this point. So I'm going to subdivide a little bit more. Give me a little bit more topology here. So I have a nice sharp edge. And why, why is that going on? I don't want that going on. Huh, that's giving me a different color. Why is, oh, why is that giving me a different color? Let's go true black. There we go. Okay. Come here like this. Just cleaning up my lines, make my lines a little bit nicer, a little bit more sharp. Some nice lazy mouse for the win. we go I can actually come in here just doing a little bit of cleanup there we go something like that okay all right yeah that's pretty that's pretty decent let's just actually move this around a little bit so I'm gonna go move and I'm just gonna give me a little bit more TLC here. All right, perfect. Okay, great. And then here, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come on this guy. I'm going to go with ambient occlusion, and I'm just going to go ahead and compute. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to get this color here. I'm going to hide this. I'm going to go with like a low intensity of color, and I'm just going to start applying some color. Soften that up just a little bit. Give me some depth variation. Here we go. And I can even too, with this, come to the paintbrush, come here to transform. Let's do active symmetry. Just kind of come in and give me a little bit of this. There we go. There we go, just a little bit of depth. All right, cool. I think we're just about done for the day. So let me go ahead and hit save. And then let's do just a quick render real fast. So I'm gonna turn on perspective and then I'm gonna turn on, let's do like the floor just real fast. So the floor grid's a little small for our project. So I'm actually gonna give it a little bit more of a grid size. So I'm going up to draw down here to grid size. Let's actually raise that up a little bit. Give me some tiles so that I have just a little bit more room for this. And then here, let's actually go to light and I'm gonna turn this one off. And let's turn this backlight on. I'm going to drag this up, push this down. And let's get some intensity here. Just to kind of show them off a little bit. Okay. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and get my main light going. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. Let's just do a quick test render. All right, that's fine. Very, very basic lighting. Let's actually dock this on the right-hand side. It's usually set to 0.85, and that's fine. Distance at 90, which is good, but I'm also gonna come up here to render. Let's dock that on the left. And then let's do a little bit of adjustment. Let's come up here to render properties and say ambient occlusion. 
Do, 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 do. Let's check some questions real fast. You can't leave without a quick redshift render. <laughs> We're going to do a BPR render for right now, and I'm going to be doing some more redshift stuff soon. I'm not set up for a redshift render right now um, at the moment. But yeah, okay, so let's see. So I'm going to come through here, add in some ambient occlusion, and we can also like kind of throw in a little bit of wax if we want. Gives it a little bit of like kind of fake subsurface scatter a bit. And then from there, let's actually come over and let's go to BPR AO. Let's turn up to zero. And then I'm just gonna quickly render that real fast. Okay, that's looking a little bit nicer, but now let's go to shadow. The global strength, so the overall strength of the shadow, let's go 0.65. And then let's go raise like 24 and then angle. We're going to do 35 ish around there. This kind of like represents what the sun looks like. And immediately it's starting to look a little bit better. Now I do kind of want a creepier vibe with this guy. So let's play with the lighting. So I'm going to get a secondary light, say something like this. And we're going to go a little bit warmer, not too warm, just a little bit warmer. With the main light that's going on, let's actually also keep that a little bit warm. Actually, you know what? Let's actually, with this light, let's keep it cooler. Let's go a little bit cooler, some contrast. And with the backlight, let's go, let's get some red. And we could boost that rim light up. Okay. It's looking kind of cool. Now, let's see here with this guy. We're going to go underneath. Going to pump it up just a little bit. This light, let's take it down. Let's see what that looks like. A little bit better. That rim light might be a little too red. Or maybe we just need a different color. This is where I like to play around. Kind of see what's possible. You know, let's go a little bit more purple. That might give me some nice gradient. A nice gradient look with that pink. Okay, cool. Let's frame him a little bit better. Let's just do a little bit of TLC real fast. Again, this is just a quick render. So let's actually turn on our BPR filters and let's do F1, noise. I like to do a radial overlay and then come up to modifiers. And what this will do is kind of spotlight them just a little bit. And we can increase the radius, the position of this, which is kind of nice. And then we can come to Sharpen and Orton, and we could turn that on just a little bit more. I got to see what's going on with this eyeball here. Could just be the way the light's hitting it. Yep, just the way the light's hitting it, which is fine. So we could do something like this. Yeah, there you go. Because I have that reflective color on. Perfect. And this will... And then we could spruce it up if we would want. If we want to add some contrast, we can. Something that's always really cool to do is come in here. And you can add a little bit of, like... You can add a little bit of, like... Not polarizing. Well, you could actually. That kind of looks cool. Contrast is a little much, but we can drop that down. But just gives us a little bit more saturation. And we can have something that looks like that. So you can get something kind of cool really, really quickly. Also, too, if you wanted more illustration look of that, we can come up here to filters. And we can play with any one of these settings. But this will be good enough for kind of just showcasing right now. So let's actually pop that up. There we go. Awesome, awesome. Simple enough. Let's go ahead and just close that down and let's hit save. Sweet. All right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for stopping in and hanging out with me. Super awesome to always have you here, of course. And again, just making something cool and fun. This was like something that was just like, kind of last minute throw together, but I thought it was kind of neat. So actually you could literally follow along with this one at the end of it, which I know uh, we're gonna shout out Dr. Sassy. He's always somebody that comes in and does the chaptering. So this actually could be something that maybe we kind of like break up into a kind of short follow along series. Um, but 
I think it's kind of neat because these kind of characters are really cool to just comment and sculpt. I, I like my style typically pushes things to like a realistic or semi hyper realistic vibe uh, with like still some cartooniness. This was kind of cool to just come in and make something kind of quick and show some cool techniques in the process. So thank you for hanging out with me again with uh, we're going to repeat it. But if you come over here to maxon.net and you want like to do the uh, student teacher license, come up here to buy. Again, we do have a deal with uh, Adobe. So we're doing the substance and the Adobe package. So you can do that, which is including the substance uh, 3D collection. So modeler, painter, designer, all that is there. And two, you can also access both the Maxon and the Adobe training team. So we're here to help. So a lot of fun stuff. And then student teacher license, again, it's 20 USD. Uh, so in the States, it's $20 a year for the entire Maxon One package. But um, again, just come on to the links and check that out, whatever that says for you um, in your area. Price may vary, but ultimately there it is. So yeah, it was awesome hanging out guys. And then two, just wanna note that um, there are gonna be some uh, streams coming up, um, not next week, but the week after, the week after next. There's going to be some fun stuff hanging out. So you're going to want to look out for all these uh, notifications and stuff that's happening. So, all right. That being said, thank you guys so much. And I will talk to you guys later. Oh, 32 Canadian. You renewed two days ago. Awesome. That's good to know. Thank you very much. All right, guys. That is it. And I'll check you guys later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.